Hi y'all, I'm Ella and I'm dramatic and problematic. She's a Mona Lisa. And welcome or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. So today we're gonna be talking about part one of season four of you. I'm just gonna go as much in chronological order as possible so you can follow through if you don't really have interest in watching it. If you have seen it, then obviously watch it. If you haven't seen it and you do wanna watch it, this video is going to be full of spoilers. Also, trigger warning. Obviously, we're going to be talking. Anything that's in you that's triggering could be mentioned in this video. So, watch at your own discretion. Honestly, I did like it more than last season. If you want to hear my thoughts on season three, I do have a video up here that you can all watch. And mm, I did not like that season. I really like season two. My ranking is season two, then one, then four, then three. <laughs> So far, so far, I don't know, 4 could end up being worse. Hey, I feel like it's a different type of show now. It reminded me a lot of Elite. Like, it's more of a whodunit. They even mentioned it. Like, most of the main cast or whatever for this season are pretty, like, a chill with murder. Joe was supposed to be, like, the weird person amongst normal people. Even if those normal people were, like, rich people. Like, they were still normal previous seasons. Like, a lot of them, other than, like, the side characters who are poor who get caught up in rich people shit like a lot of them are rich and they're still like not cool with murder we don't really find out right away what happened with marion he did find her and like this hitman like give him a passport and a new identity to stay in london and was like okay you just have to kill her because she knows who you are does not kill her he just steals her necklace and sends it to the hitman it's a hitman who works for love's dad he didn't want to tell love's dad the truth it was like oh just give me the money that was from love's account before she died it reminded me of the hacker from season two i think i don't know if they were trying to rehash that plot i don't know if this hitman's gonna be relevant again it, it kind of felt like a waste of time it's kind of taking me out of the story joe ends up getting a job at a university question mark as a professor question mark i was disturbed when i saw it so we see this creepy other professor guy who his name is Malcolm and he's just super chummy with Joe. Go, go, go. Rouse young minds. And he's just annoying and Joe's trying to avoid him having his judgmental monologue in the back. It's honestly so annoying, but kind of iconic at the same time. My thing with Joe Goldberg is like, I do want to hate him. When I first started watching the first episode, I was like, I want to hate him. But then I heard his voice and like the narration was giving me like Gossip Girl, like Dan Humphrey was Gossip Girl all along, spoiler alert for <laughs> Gossip Girl, and he's talking about things. I don't remember the context, but he's like, the heart wants what it wants. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but yes, my heart wants what it wants, even if he's a crazy psychopath. I think he's happy because everyone in London is bookworms, according to you. I don't know if this is true. Sounds like a bit of a stereotype, but he basically is like, if LA was purgatory and suburbia was hell, then London was my good plays like really really it joe was making a lot of pop culture references too and i was like this is really giving gossip girl like voiceover like what is going on <laughs> he's trying to ignore this guy and goes back home and what he has a apartment across from him and can see into his apartment and it's like always spying him and his girlfriend Kate. And like his excuse for like spying on these people is that he wants to stay away from them and the trouble they're gonna cause him. So he has to spy on them to know what's gonna be up with them so he can avoid them. Question mark. You're delusional. So Kate is at the university one day and is getting basically attacked at her car by these two guys. Joe, nice guy he is, goes and saves her. He's like, oh, just don't tell like police about me because like my work piece is shaky. She's like, oh, okay, but she's kind of like a cold person and it's like, well, let me drive you home. Well, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Like, I'm not gonna say anything to Malcolm because if I say anything else, like they're gonna rope me into things and I don't want it. But before he can even finish his thought, Malcolm's there inviting him to parties like you must you must they end up going to this place called sundry home and it's like a party place with all the rich people we basically get a flash introduction to all the characters and like joe spying on them in his computer before going to the party so that he meets all the people and just gets really fucking drunk is doing shots saying crazy things to people and then ends up having to go home 
because like my guy faded like gone gone like they gave him a shot of acid basically he gets taken home by malcolm he wakes up the next morning is just chilling live off laughing what is there in his table living room table fucking malcolm's corpse and yeah i was a bit shocked when i first saw it in just for a split second because y'all remember last season this bitch was killing people every episode really joe like he was saying i'm gonna live this life like mm, i let marion go i'm gonna be a better person now but he kills this dude right away i mean to be honest malcolm wasn't the person that was like sad that died because like he was creepy weird and it gets worse like we found out even worse things about him after his death joe does his usual thing and gets rid of the body and is just going about his life and then gets a text from this random chat app that he didn't install called evanescence and it's like oh so you got rid of the body or like blah 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 like i didn't expect it tell me why he didn't do it <laughs> like i was shocked that was a good twist that's why i was like mm, okay this season might be good so it turns out it's someone else and they end up calling it like eat the rich killer i think the person joe is obsessed with this season the you in this season is not some girl it's this crazy killer and honestly i liked it because it was giving dexter vibes so now let me get started with the characters i'm gonna probably talk about joe for last because like it's joe he's the main character everything ends up revolving around him so first malcolm we built this country and what thanks do we get for it ah yes definitely builders hands so he was like just drunk at work uh as a professor and of course he likes joe like he was just ew 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 but somehow this guy he's like the son of a duke or something like that like and he's dating this girl kate but he's also effing around with a bunch of other people i guess she knows they have the type of relationship it's open i guess and then he was sleeping with his student speaking about his student we have nadia i don't know she was the first shot and like joe and her don't ever like kiss or anything we'll see if anything happens in the second part because it was just creepy they were just hanging out around each other a lot find out she and malcolm had an affair so i don't know if that's why she was around joe that much but she was just giving me the vibes like the reporter from season two it was giving me very much that character joe was like oh we have to acknowledge that gen z are actually adults sign blah blah and just kind of standing up for jesse and i was like oh oh what's happening joe like i'm liking you more and more this season <laughs> she was judging joe and having like a really good back and forth with him about who done it and whatever and then he offered to read her book I don't know there's some vibes there and like i just don't like it for her because i do think she's a good person and like just chill so i'm like mm, stay away from her so then we have kate malcolm's girlfriend she's a workaholic we learned this because joe's spying on her through the window and is she's always on her computer working while malcolm is out there sleeping with his students i guess she isn't technically the main girl all the girls before were really into him and she's not really into him that much she's really pushing him away are you surprised i can read or something why are you staring at them i don't think joe was really into her that much at the beginning either tbh he was just being a creep because that's what he does but she was just like sussing him out like you know she didn't send the police to him at first obviously but then after malcolm went missing she sent it to him right away and was like mm -mm -mm. i hope you had a good time with the police and it's just being rude to him honestly he's not he's not much nicer he's following her around and being creepy and she just kind of picks up on the creepy vibes and then ends up psychoanalyzing him i was like pop off queen i just i don't like her as a love interest i think she was too smart i think she should have figured out i mean technically he wasn't the killer this season so like I guess I give her a pass. We end up finding out like she's actually the richest of like the whole group. I was sus on her. Mm, like I honestly did think like oh my god it was gonna be her. They have a moment where you think it was her. There's someone who is dead and she's standing over the corpse and Joe walks in on it and he's like oh. but she's like no 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 like I just found it like this like what is going on and he helps her get rid of the body it's a whole mess i i don't think they had that much chemistry like the actors didn't do a bad job i don't think but it was no freaking victoria pedretti so yeah moving on to the next person is lady phoebe we're introduced to at the party as well she is one of the first people i think joe meets right away 
and she's kind of like seems like to be the leader of these people like everyone follows her lead honestly <laughs> if you're in with phoebe you're in with the group when joe is black out i don't know what the fuck joe says to her but she keeps mentioning it she's inviting him to all the events obviously it's kind of suspicious i mean right away they don't assume that malcolm's missing because malcolm's a piece of shit the killer actually sends the freaking finger he cut off the finger and sent it to the police anyway she is dating this guy adam which we'll talk more about later but they're having kind of some issues so obviously right away i got vibes with her and joe we could tell she's into him she kind of tries to go in for it and at this point just already hooked up with kate backtracks and she's really sad like she's like oh my god you're rejecting me and it was it was really good like the actress I was like shocked. It was so genuine. Like they have this heart to heart. I know, and then I was like, wait, this is too good. Like, is she actually like the bad person? Like they really got me. I was like, whoa. But yeah, the, the issues is because of her boyfriend, her boyfriend, Adam. He's one of the people being blackmailed by Malcolm. And he's super sus. Like he's introduced as Phoebe's boyfriend and one of the Americans. Like he's American like you. He owns 100 home and yeah, he's just like a menace. <laughs> I thought he was like sussing Joe out. Like I was like, what is happening? And then like Joe's like following him and sees his kink. He likes getting golden showers from servants. And so that's what <laughs> Malcolm was blackmailing him with. But hold on, Lady Phoebe's servant followed him and like beats him up it's it was a menace it was a menace moment when he and lady phoebe have that heart to heart he ends up telling phoebe the truth and so phoebe like goes to adam and it's like oh like i know the truth like i know you have a kink darling he's like not telling her and ends up telling her she's about to do it and he's not into it at all she's like what's going on and then he's like mm, i just like it because you know the servants that are beneath me and then she's like oh, we can't do this because like you you feel like i'm above you so obviously he does feel like that because throughout the series we see like basically poor he is losing money and he's in debt with people his daddy is not gonna take him out of the red this time because his daddy's done this too many times and he's sick of it so he was gonna propose because oh if i marry her all the debt goes away but then i can't have fun anymore mm, boo -hoo. and so she realizes what is going on basically it's like oh no we have to end yeah they basically break up not for long then we have blessing i just mentioned her here she didn't have that much of a role it's just princess i liked her as much as she was there i wish she had a bigger role she was one of the first people introduced so i thought she would have a bigger role but she was just having random lines i was a bit concerned at some of the things she was saying but i was cackling because it was like it was a funny character of like rich people I say off with his fucking head. No context to this because I'll give the context later. <laughs> then we have Simon, the other person who freaking Malcolm was blackmailing because he has this art gallery opening and whatever. He was just very off putting before the art opening that he had. I don't know, he was just shown eating the one scene and like after when joe was thinking or talking about him they kept going back to the shot of him eating and like chewing and like i don't know if i'm misremembering but i'm pretty sure they had the sound effect of him chewing both times and it was just like very off-putting for me they were making him the red herring and i mean there's literally a point where nadia she has a line where she's like oh usually the person who's the most suspicious at the beginning is the second victim and this guy turns out to be it so i guess they were doing it on purpose and his paintings were so beautiful but then this girl comes and like throws paint at his painting it used to be like an apprentice of him and like he stole her art that's basically it he gets killed and then it's like linked with malcolm like and then we have sophie his sister honestly not much to say about her she was like talking a lot of shit in the first episode like during the party to joe and stuff and then she barely did anything the rest of the season she was very sad during the funeral like just no room for plot or being a character in the show anymore i guess she was taking a break and grieving <laughs> <laughs> slack off and die malcolm then we have reese he's also introduced of the party he's just off to the side and 
is leaving the next day so it kind of exempts him from blame at first he has this tragic backstory where he was raised by a single mom and then found out he was the son of a duke right away him and joe related to each other and they were just like down to earth throughout the season when the other characters are being rich and crazy and i think it's the only person like joe's like saying his honest thoughts to the season and it's it's kind of interesting honestly i shouldn't have talked about him yet because like he has some reveals but i'll talk about him more at the end when i talk about joe he doesn't show up much he's just like there and like leaves like he is there at the beginning of everything and then leaves oh you're in europe now jonathan you can get anywhere you want it's three house connie the horse guy, annoying laugh. All they told me is he's a lunatic and owns horses. Like that's literally the only thing I have about him because he was also another super background character. He barely has any lines and he's so annoying. I think he's probably my least liked character of the season just because he was obnoxious. Like some of the other characters, yeah, they're rich and annoying. But like they're funny at least. Then you have Rold. He was in the sidelines for the first few episodes. I was just like, what is going on? and then just giving like kind of the side eye to joe comments were kind of on point like he wasn't like the horse guy i was like okay okay and then like he's into kate it was just weird like it was a bit hinted at yes and then it just came on full force like just too too strong too fast i feel like they end up going to this place lady phoebe owns the hamsies i think it's called and we find out rold was the one who had made for joe to get invited and it's really weird like i think a couple people go greet him joe at the door and roll to one of them and it was he's just acting weird and i'm like mm, what's going on i don't know his intentions i don't know that were adding up to me of course we find out he has a camera with creepy photos of kate rehashing season one peach too bad. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I want to like this season, but it does feel like a remix of a lot of the other things in the other seasons. Like, what, what is going on? So let's talk about Gemma. Gemma Graham Greene managed to disparage Americans, trans people, the poor, and Jews in a single sentence. She's sick. She's probably the worst character. Like, I know I said I didn't like Connie, and it was probably my least favorite character. Gemma was awful, but she had a purpose, and that was to die. She was very one-dimensional. And like my notes at the beginning was like, I don't think there'd be much development. And there wasn't, she was just awful. And the worst part is, I think they're playing croquet and she basically makes the servant be a hoop. Get on your force. And it's just like slapping him on the butt and just doing all these inappropriate things. I was like, and everyone's laughing. As soon as they went into the freaking place, old estate, and they had like, they, they're talking about hunting and whatnot. I was like, oh my God they're gonna hunt people like this is gonna happen and then they're eating dinner that day and she's like looking at joe and just going in to freaking mock him till he breaks basically and starts accusing him of being the, the rich killer which like he is a creep and he is awful but like he wasn't so uh, it's like this whole started when you came here right so <laughs> and then obviously she got murdered <laughs> because she did and that's the girl kate's standing over and whatever he basically sees joe going to where him and kate left Gemma's body but kate had ended up dropping her bracelet joe goes to get it and tell me why rolls spying and sees him and then goes after him like oh wait you killed her and then goes to this like the living room where everyone is like it's with a gun just like saying like he's gonna kill him it's like oh this is the it eat the rich killer and like the other rich people are like oh my god like blah blah and they're just going crazy and then it's like oh i'm gonna shoot him and they're like yeah yeah and then he's, he's just like pointing the gun it's like oh i'll give you a head start he's about to go but then adam comes out of nowhere super upset him and phoebe had this whole falling out and is blaming joe and it's just basically trying to beat up joe joe ends up getting away but like it's getting chased by rolled over this gun i'm going peasant hunting at the meantime, like Phoebe had found Kate. I don't know, she finds out the truth and Kate comes clean. Rule is just chasing him and like laughing and cutting it up. It's not him. He gets tied up and knocked out. And then Joe wakes up in the cell and it's like, oh, what is going on? So Joe, he was like so paranoid this season and once Simon had passed, he was just like going crazy, chasing after Kate because the person doing these murders was like saying they're gonna go after kate next 
and he was just trying to protect her because you know he has this savior complex not the bodyguard lady phoebe's bodyguard was there so the freaking person had planted malcolm's ring on joe and the bodyguard ends up finding it and it's like oh my god it was you you're the killer blah 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 and so joe turns around and like ends up killing him to be fair i also am i wrong that this is the only person joe kills this season i think it is good job joe honestly it's a good improvement from last season he's just trying to find out who this killer is and then the killer's like oh how did it feel joe's trying to be all hypocritical in his head and be like oh it was sick like this person's sick blah blah and then he realizes oh this killer wants me to like it wants me to be like him because they want a friend like i'm telling y'all dexter if y'all remember miguel season three i think from dexter it was giving that and that was like when dexter was at his best after that it kind of went downhill i think especially poignant and i don't know if that's what they were trying to reference i don't know if the writers just had this in mind but the person who ends up being the murderer is reese who is also trying to run for mayor now i don't remember exactly when miguel was but i think it's center don't quote me on that but like this guy's also trying to run for office similar type of premise and he's actually like it's like the eat the rich killer and he's a locked up joe enrolled and it's like okay joe find a way to kill this guy and just like yes yes like pretending to go along with it as he pretended to go along with it in evanescence before and so riz is like okay okay we'll see and like leaves joe's morality system is like really weird i don't know if this is like the point of the season are they gonna address his morality system because like reese is trying to get him to confront because <laughs> he's saying like you're not any better and i'm just like joe listen to reese like why all these are names also world reese like i'm getting confused he does not listen and reese is upset after so he is like okay y'all are dying i'm gonna burn this place to the ground fuck y'all and so he starts trying to get out he ends up getting his chains off and rolls screaming at him and just like okay i'll help you like chill but they can't really get out and they're just trying to see what's gonna happen and then kate comes and is just helping them so that's basically how they get out it was reese all along like it's obvious though it's obvious we see this montage of reese being his crazy self and just giving interviews being a psycho on television joe being delusional about himself like what's new what's new honestly i was so annoyed because i feel like joe was really really guilting this guy and it's like he, who's he killing Gemma? Gemma, who's sexually harassing her staff i mean i'm not saying that people should be murdered for that joe did way worse things unaliving people left and right for no reason like beck i don't think beck was like a bad person like she did some like not great things in the scale of things but compared to these people like she she was a good person she was a decent person like i understand you don't want to see your killer on the loose but you're a serial killer on the loose so chill chill out it's like he gets intimidated so yeah his obsession is reese like he's like sorry kate but like i can't be with you i'm already i already have someone else can we get gayness i don't think we'll get gayness out of it but i was like wow but like the issues is, i don't feel like we get that much of reese like i don't think i know him that much we barely see him it feels like the elite format they are cutting back and forth like that but it just it reminded me a lot of elite they're just older people like actually of age so it's less creepy it's not an ensemble cast type of thing i mean like it is kind of because there's so many characters this season like the poster even to me looks like out of elite or some type of thing like that i don't know the more i'm talking about it the more annoyed i'm getting with this season but i i guess it's only half a season so like once we get the other half it's probably not gonna be as bad maybe maybe i'll get more attached to the characters what are my theories i think reese might die if joe doesn't die like is this the last season okay well from what i'm seeing Penn Batchley says he signed a six-year contract so they could do two more seasons uh, they definitely haven't shot this as like the last season then i don't think joe dies so we might have reese die maybe kate as long as lady phoebe doesn't die i'm fine anyways yeah i don't know that that's my thoughts it's a little all over the place let me know what you guys thought let me know what characters you liked uh did i miss any characters probably who knows it was a mixed bag i don't know 
I'm like, I know I said I liked it better than season three, but like, I'm questioning that back. I haven't watched season three in a year though, and I'm remembering the anti-vaxxers, and I'm just like, I feel like there was less deaths this season, and like every death had more purpose than any of the deaths last season had, to be honest. So this was just better to me. Like it was just, it made more sense. So if you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe and leave a super thanks if you like to, but you don't have to. It's a free world. So I hope you're having a fantastic morning, afternoon, night, whatever time it is for you. I love you guys so, 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 so much. She's a Mona Lisa.